Welcome to Significant Life, the podcast for women who want to live, lead, and serve from an anchored place. I'm your host, Janice Anderson, wife, mother of three, CEO, and lover of all things Jesus. I firmly believe that strong women need an even stronger support system. So whether you need to get it done or come undone, this is a place where you can do it all without second-guessing who you are, disconnecting from those you love, or undervaluing your irreplaceable contribution to the world. Regardless of what you're facing, this I know for sure, you were created to live and enjoy a significant life. Let's dive into today's episode. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about today's episode. Welcome back. We are about to embark upon a series of about four episodes on this topic. I hadn't even planned on doing this topic, but because of the conversations that I have been having behind the scenes in everyday life with amazing women just like you, I realized that this conversation is necessary and is necessary now. So get your pen, get your paper, and let's get ready because we are about to talk about the four-letter word. Yeah, the four-letter word. What what four-letter word, Janice, are you talking about? Yeah, that one that you don't want to talk about, the one that you're nervous about, the one that you keep avoiding. And every time someone mentions it, you give them the side eye. And what word is that? The word is rest. Yep, rest. When did rest become a four-letter word? Girl, I don't know, but in this episode, we're going to unpack it because In the last seven days, five out of the seven women that I have spoken with, when asked them, when I asked them, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What's going on? Each of them, five of them out of the seven responded with the same thing. Girl, I'm just tired. But here's the thing. They didn't just say I'm tired. Each of them, when they shared that they were tired, felt like they had to follow it up with some justification or um, explanation because they couldn't just be tired. In this episode, I just want to unpack that. What is that about? Like, talk to me about what's that about? Like, when was it not okay for us to acknowledge that we're tired and we need to rest? I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait. And if you're saying, Janice, no, no, it's okay, I believe in rest, Do you, how often do you say, or do you acknowledge that you're tired? I'll take it a step further. Let me just go ahead and define tired for you because maybe you're like, yeah, I just use another word. As a matter of fact, one of my friends, I was talking to him about it and, you know, we're using this idea of, um, tired. Like it's okay. I actually said to him, friend slash client, you know, Hey, I want you to do a video on this. And I want you to talk about, you know, the fact that people are weary and that they're tired and let them know it's okay. And so, you know, I've watched how he talked about the assignment, you know, he took it, he ran with it, he killed it, but he didn't use the word tired, nor did he use the word weary. Instead, he said fatigued. And while it is a subtle shift and the words are often synonymous, I feel that it was intentional because my client, just like many of my girlfriends and many of my colleagues and probably even you, struggle with the idea of acknowledging, I'm tired. I'm tired and I need to rest. It's like somewhere there's this looming judgment um, and there's this label that comes with who we are if we were to dare stop and say, I'm tired. So let's just level set so we can make sure we're all on the same page. Um, I want to just define for you what tired is. So I kind of looked it up because I'm a nerd like that. So I looked up the word tired and tired means drained of strength and energy, fatigued, often to the point of exhaustion. And this was my favorite one. Obviously worn by hard use run down. Whoa. So my question, pause for a minute. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Are you tired? Are you tired? Better question. When you're tired, how do you deal with it? 
Yeah, when when you're tired. Not if you're tired or if you ever get tired, but when you're tired, when you're drained of energy and of strength, when you're at the point of exhaustion, how do you deal with it? Let me give you three questions I want you I want you to answer in that. Who do you tell? Where where is it safe for you to say, I'm tired? What do you do? Like when you're tired, you do what? What is it? When you get tired, what happens? And third question is, how do you recover? I want you to reflect on those questions after this podcast, even throughout this podcast, because I believe that this is something that is imperative for us to succeed in life. Is one that we acknowledge that there are moments in our life when we are tired. And then I want us to check in with how do we process those moments. So for the rest of the episode, I just want to normalize the fact that one, we get tired, but two, we need rest. Rest is not a cuss word. <laughs> it's not a four letter word, but somehow we've gotten to the place where being tired is synonymous with being lazy, crazy. Therefore, rest is a cuss word but not in this community, not after today. So I want to just give some backdrop on what rest is and why it's significant. So first I look at, so as you know, you already know me, you know, when I'm looking to define a word, I first go to see what that word meant from a biblical context and, um, you know, what, what did God have in mind when he created this idea and this concept of rest? And when he uses this word rest, what, what does it really mean? And so as we dive into this concept of rest and the idea to rest, I want to just highlight for you three main um, perspectives and three uses of the word rest from a biblical context that I think is relevant to our lives today. Now, I'm using a biblical context because I'm a God girl, you know that. And um, this is not a Bible study, though I'm going to go through several verses of scripture. The point in doing that is so that you can see, number one, this idea and concept of rest is something that was God's plan from the beginning. It is not Actually, what you'll hear as I'm sharing this with you is this is not an optional idea. It's not, oh, you know, if you have enough time and, you know, you don't have a lot going on in your life, why don't you go ahead and throw some rest in there? <laughs> what you'll see is this was God's idea from the beginning. You were created with rest in mind. And so every day that you're not, and I'm going ahead of myself, that you're not honoring your body and your mind and your life's need for rest is a day that you're not honoring your divine design. Can I say that again? Every day that you're not honoring your body, your, your mind, your life's need for rest. Again, this is not optional. It's a day that you're dishonoring your divine design. By divinely, but divine design you were designed by the, your, your creator, God, to need rest and to operate from a place of rest. Okay, so as I share these definitions, and I'm only going to go over three definitions, I think four today, but this podcast, I'm going to go deeper into what it looks like in a practical sense in, in um, future episodes. But for now, I want to just level set with just definitions so we can make sure that we're on the same page. And what I want you to get out of this, this particular episode, if you don't get anything else, is that you were created with rest in mind. That is part of your divine design, your natural makeup. Anything else is going against your original design. So first, I look at rest and its benefit to your soul, to the posture of your soul. So one, I look at a scripture I found in Psalm 116, verse 7. Scripture reads, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. Actually, one version says, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. And so what, what does rest mean in that verse? Rest in that verse actually means... Um, 
It's a resting place. It's the posture of your heart. It is to, let me see, I wrote my little definition down. It means, um, oh, to be tranquil, to be at a tranquil, tranquil position. Why can't I say tranquil today? Okay, sorry. And so um, that particular version of rest and use of rest to be tranquil, to be in a, a tranquil state of mind, for to, to have your soul at ease and at rest, it is one reason why it's important that our soul is at rest. It's one reason why um, that it, it is important. Scripture reveals that this is important even to God. And what is I thought was telling as I was looking at that, is when the psalmist talks about it, he says, rest, oh, my soul, because the Lord has been good to you. He's saying you can calm down thoughts, emotions, desires, because God has been good to you. What did it take for him, for, for the psalmist at that time, to, re, to acknowledge that God has been good to him? To me, I believe he had to slow down long enough to reflect on the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord may have not be top of mind for him. It probably wasn't top of mind. And so I want you to just take a moment because what he was doing was expressing gratitude. And because of the gratefulness of his heart, he can tell his mind to calm down. So he was like, hey, mind, hey, will, hey, emotion, hey, thought life, take, take a chill pill. God's been good to us. You know, so one rest is imperative um, for us because it's a posture of our heart. It's a posture. It's a condition of our mind and of our thinking. And one way we can get there is through practicing gratitude. And you've heard this before. But then, two, I thought that same uh, this was really blew my mind. That same definition of rest was also found and demonstrated in Ruth chapter three, verse one. Crazy. And on that scripture, this is what happened. This blessed me. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, my daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee that it may be well with thee? So here they're talking. If you've read it, go back and read it. If you haven't read the story, Ruth, it's very short but very powerful. What is going on in this exchange is Naomi, the mother-in-law, is telling her daughter-in-law, hey, isn't it fair for me to want you to find rest? Listen, by way of marriage, Naomi understood that marriage, the, the, the institute of marriage, the covenant of marriage was designed to bring tranquility of mind, peace of mind, peace of thought, a settled state. That's because that's also what rest means there, a settledness of state and condition of your mind and your heart. Oh, okay. Breathe, Janice, breathe. For everyone who's married, I just want to ask you this question. You don't have to answer aloud. Do not send me any hate mail. But is your marriage a place where you have tranquility of heart and mind? Does it give you peace? Are you at rest in that relationship? Because it was designed to be that. Okay. Enough about that. So let me tell you a little bit more about rest. So that's just one definition of rest. So we know it's not a cuss word because it is a posture of our heart. It's a posture of our thought life, our minds. It's tranquility. It's a settled state of mind. That's what rest is. But let me give you a second definition of rest. Second definition is a resting place, a state or condition. Now here, the scriptures that I found, there are several, but the ones I want to highlight for the sake of this podcast episode are in Genesis chapter eight, verse nine. And get this, this is when the dove, this is right during the time of the flood. So no, go back and read the story. Um, God had cleansed the earth by way of flood, AKA he wiped everybody out except for knowing his family and the people in the ark. And the dove was going to see if the coast was clear and he was looking for a place to land. So rest here is a place to land. Is, do you have a safe place to land? Are you living your life um, in such a way that there are safe spots where you can land? That's what rest means. It's a landing place, a resting place. Also, that same version of rest, that same definition of rest is found in Lamentations chapter 1, verse 3. And there, the author was talking about at the time of affliction, a time of struggling, a time of going through, of warfare and agitation, he found a place to rest, a resting place. And again, that's a safe place to land. The conditions are favorable for me to just 
relax. Do you have that? Because right now, I mean, a safe place to land, a safe place to cover, recover myself, a place where my heart and mind are at tranquility, you know, are settled. None of those seem like bad ideas. Yet, for some reason, we think it's that way. We treat rest like it's a bad word. But that's only two definitions. I want to go further as we get ready to wrap this on home. And then the last one, the last definition of rest. This is why I think that we all should rest and abolish the idea that rest is a four letter word it is but you know it's not a cuss word is this it means to cease to cease desist to rest aka to end or abstain now the 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 scripture references i have for this one are found in genesis chapter 8 verse 22 and this is so interesting to me so interesting to me but what this scripture reveals is that there will um for as long as the earth remains there will be night and day seed time and harvest time and seasons and they shall not rest. They shall not cease. Their rest in that verse means to end. And I think sometimes this is where we, this is the rest that we, we think about when we think of rest. I can't rest. There is a song is I'm a, I'm a rest when I die. Yeah. So you saying, yeah, I get that. I get, I get, I'm gonna keep on going until I die. But if you don't rest, you will die. How about that? But then there's another scripture. There's one other reference, one other reference, and it's found in um, the same thing to cease in in Nehemiah chapter six, verse three. And I'm going to read this one because it says, Nehemiah said this, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Why should the work rest while I leave it and come down to you? So he's not saying, why should it be on pause? He's saying, why should I stop this important thing that I'm doing to respond to your distraction? Why, why should I stop, cease the work? And so I think sometimes in our minds, when we think of rest, we're thinking to abruptly end. That this means to absolutely stop and rather than a pause. And so there's different types and that type of rest, you know, if you look in both of those scriptures, those were emphatic, Hey, we are not ceasing the work. This is to continue forever. That rest is to put to a permanent end. So there is one version of rest that means to put to a a permanent end, but that ain't the one. And then the last um, definition of it is to desist from labor. Now I love this because one, did you all know that it is ceased and cease and desist like what the police officer saying, cease, because clearly I'm tongue tied today, and desist. I used to, what did you say to that? I used to say cease and assist. I didn't even know what it was, but cease and assist. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. But anyway, I just digress. Okay, so desist, D E S I S T, from labor is, a, is the final form of rest. And that is, um, that means to listen to this. So this particular version of rest is found one, two, three, four, five, five times in scripture. And can I tell you, can I tell you the one I'm going to highlight on? The one I want to land on is in 34, Exodus chapter 34, verse 21. And this version of rest literally says, this is the version where God rested from all of his work, but then it says, comma, so that he may be refreshed. This particular, and this is is written um, three times, Exodus 34, verse 21, um, Exodus 23, verse 12, and in 2 Samuel verse six, chapter 16, verse 14. And each time, rest, desisting from labor, to take a break from your labor, to stop working, was so that you may be refreshed. Could it be that because we have distorted perceptions and definitions and even distorted understanding of what it means to rest, that we are missing out on the opportunity for us to be refreshed. If God himself, creator of the entire universe, saw fit that it was necessary, that he ceases from his work, that he rests from all he was doing so that he can be refreshed, Why do we act as if rest is a four-letter word? In the next few episodes, I'm going to talk to you about the cost of you not resting. I'm going to talk to you about ways that we can rest 
And then um, I'm going to highlight the benefits of rest. And I know it seems um, like, duh, Janice, I know I should rest, but we ain't doing it. And far too many of us are afraid. If I'm, if I'm honest, I believe we're afraid to rest. So I'm going to end with this. In Exodus 23, verse 12, and Exodus 34, verse 21, when scripture refers to God ceasing from his work, resting from his work so that he can be refreshed, I couldn't believe this when I read it, and I hope that it blesses you the way that it blessed me. But do you know that the word refresh in those two verses means to take a breath? Y'all, God stopped what he was doing so that he could take a breath. And if God Almighty, creator of the entire universe, he's not the universe, he's the creator of the universe. If he thought it necessary to cease from what he was doing, to change his posture, to change the condition of where he was, to slow down and settle himself so that he could take a breath, wouldn't you think it's a great idea <laughs> for you to slow down, to take a break, to, to pause from what you're doing, desist from your labor, and just take a breath? I'm going to read this scientific um, benefit of breath, of breathing, and then um, we're going to talk next week. Okay, so in his book, Breathe, Breath, this new science of lost art by James Nestor. For those of you who are watching me live via video, I'm showing you the book. He gives his entire amazing scientific study on the power of breath work. But one of the things he immediately points out is this. Many modern maladies, asthma, anxiety, attention deficit, hyperactivity, disorder, psoriasis, and more could either be reduced or reversed simply by changing the way we inhale and exhale. So as you end this episode and stay tuned for the next two, the, the three episodes, I want to encourage you, girl, slow down and take a breath. All right, this has been Janice Anderson. I hope, I hope this was an encouraging episode for you. If you got something out of it, if you're watching me on YouTube, comment below this video. Let me know what you got out of it, any questions that you have. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, here's what I want you to do. Like and subscribe to this podcast, but then drop me a note. Just simply go to mysignificantlife.org forward slash podcast and leave me a note on the podcast page. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.